Morocco, a mesmerizing North African kingdom known for its historical influence, unique blend of Amaziac and Arab cultures, intricate art crafts, delicious cuisine, welcoming locals, and natural wonders that extend beyond the golden dunes of the Sahara Desert. Recently, we spent 17 days exploring some of the best Moroccan destinations. We started our trip with 5 days in Marrakesh, then 4 days in Ait Ben Hadou and the Sahara Desert in Merzouga, 2 days more in the world's largest medina in Fes, from where we took a 5-hour bus to Chefchaouen. We stayed 3 nights in the blue city of Morocco, exploring the charming streets of its medina, appreciating every detail in its colorful buildings, visiting its important sites, and spending few hours hiking next to the waterfalls of Akchur in the nearby reef mountains. For Rain and Chano, subscribe to our channel to join us in our six-part travel series of Morocco. In this fifth episode, we will share with you our whole itinerary and travel tips to experience a perfect trip to Chef Shawin. Our early bus departed from Fes CTM bus station at 8 am and arrived in Chef Shawin around 1 pm. From the Chef Shawin bus station, we took a 5 minute taxi ride to the Bab El Ayin city gate. Our hotel was located inside the Medina, only 5 minutes walking away from there. Dar da Disilef is an authentic traditional Riyadh with a wonderful blue interior design. Our room was beautifully decorated and spacious. We even had a bathtub. I felt like in the blue palace of a fairy tale walking around. Chano doesn't feel well because he thought he can handle the heat and he was not sleeping enough. He was taking sunrise, sunset and walking under the sun for the whole day. So now, he's going to miss a few hours in Chef Shawin. Chanu never gets sick at home, so I let him rest for a while. Chef Shawin was founded in 1471, originally as a fortress for protection against Portuguese attacks in northern Morocco. It is situated 600 meters over sea level in the foothills of the Reef Mountains. After the Spanish reconquista of Al-Andalus, many Muslims from the Iberian Peninsula had to emigrate and some chose Chef Shawin to settle in. Their Andalusi culture merged with the local Gomaras and in a few years, the city became very prosperous. Every year, more and more visitors come to Shafshawen to appreciate its distinctive historical buildings with their appealing variety of shades of blue. Shafshawen is often referred as the Blue Pearl of the Moroccan Kingdom. By the time China started to feel better, the day was almost coming to an end. So we decided to sleep very early in order to be full of energy the next morning. Before going to bed, we went to the rooftop of our Riyadh to watch the beautiful sunset over the blue buildings of Shafshawen. In our long trips, we barely rest. We're always exploring and filming for the whole day. But sometimes, a little bit of balance is needed to avoid getting too exhausted and proper rest is necessary to enjoy the places to the fullest.
The next morning, we left our Riyadh at 7 a.m. to have the streets of Shafshaman for ourselves. We totally advise to do this if you want to appreciate the most famous streets of the town without tourists and if you aim to capture captivating pictures. Hours later, many of these spots were quite busy, especially near the main streets that cross the Medina. If you're wondering about how real are the blue buildings of Shafshawin, we guarantee that most of the historic parts of the town has blue walls and doors, and even the floor is often painted with different tones of blue. We felt a soothing effect while being surrounded by these calming colors. It is as if the sky was blending with the earth to bring peace and serenity to the environment. We have found the rare and unique green door in Shashama. Legend says it's the only one in the whole town. Was it blue before? We don't know. Dear, come on, come on. This is like the, this is the most active. <laughs> when we returned to the Riyadh, our host Ahmed had a nice breakfast ready for us. Eating in the peaceful outdoor garden of Dar Dadi Silif while listening to the chirping of birds was a lovely experience. How are you feeling, mi amor? After eating all this delicious breakfast and getting my chamomile from the hostel owner, I feel much better. But I knew he was already better because we spent almost three hours in the morning taking photos and videos. And that's how I know that he's back to his real self. We have to recover the time lost to this. Before heading out again, we climbed to the Riyadh rooftop one more time to enjoy the views with the bright daylight. We walked for only five minutes, finding new alluring spots along the way. And soon, we were in the main square of Shafshawin. The Uta El Hammam Square, in the heart of the Medina, is a place of gathering for locals and tourists alike, with many restaurants and two of the main historical monuments of the town. The Great Mosque, built at the end of the 15th century, is the oldest in the town. Like most mosques in Morocco, its interior is only accessible to Muslims. Next to the mosque, you will find the Kasba, built by Ali ibn Rashid. This is the medieval citadel where the city originated in 1471. Today, it is open to the public and houses the Ethnographic Museum. We are now visiting the Kasba of Shafshawin. This is the only monument in the town that you have to pay to access. Inside of the monument, you can walk across the green courtyard gardens and also climb the tallest of its 10 towers from where you can admire impressive views over this fortress but also over the blue town of Shafshawin. You can also admire the red roof and the octagonal minaret of the Great Mosque. The small ethnographic museum is located in a 17th century red ochre house built inside the Kasba. We were hungry again, so we chose the restaurant Jabaria to try the local cuisine. We're going to eat our lunch in one of the best rated restaurants in Shafshalin. 
and they gave us some free starters while waiting for our main dish. We've been eating tagine and couscous often and now we're trying new dishes. This is also a dish that we haven't tried before. It's some sort of chicken with lentils, olives and a little bit of lemon. After lunch, we crossed the Uta El Hammam Square again and we headed towards the northeast of the Medina. Many of the streets were now full of stores for tourists selling local products. I've been looking for so long for this hand of Fatima in color green and finally I found it. Also known as Hamsa, this amulet that represents protection is often used for jewelry in North Africa and the Middle East. Chef Shawin gets much busier in the middle of the day, but you can still find untouched corners deep in the alleyways. We fell in love with the blue doors and couldn't stop immortalizing them with our cameras. This trendy patio is inside someone's house, so you have to contribute with 5 dirhams to get your picture. We continued our way towards another popular spot in the town. Just outside the northeastern gate of the Medina, the Ras Elma little waterfalls are descending from a natural spring in the mountains. Next to the river, you can see how nowadays some locals refresh oranges to sell juices in the shelters and fountains where they used to wash their clothes in the past. Passing beyond Ras Elma, you will find the paved trail that in 15 minutes will bring you to the Spanish mosque. From this vantage point, you can enjoy one of the best views over Shafshawin and the nearby mountains. There were a lot of people already waiting for the sunset when we arrived, so we went down the hill a little bit to have a clearer view over the scenery. Although the clouds over the horizon were partially covering the sun, once the twilight started, the sky exploded in red and pink colors while the lights of the blue city slowly turned on under our sight. We couldn't ask for a more magical way to end the day. For dinner, we stopped in the cafe Clock in our way back to the Riyadh. They offer some Western dishes, but with a Moroccan touch. If I agree to wake up very early for the second day in a row to film a place with Chano, you can be sure that it is because Chef Shawin is one of the most beautiful towns I've ever seen in my life. You may be asking, why is Chef Shawin so blue? And the answer, well, there is no official reason, but there are some theories that we can share with you. Some people say that the blue and white colors keep the houses fresh under the sun, especially in summer. Others say that these colors help to keep insects and mosquitoes away. Another popular theory says that many Jews came to live in the Medina after World War II because Chef Shaman had been hosting this community since the times of the Spanish Inquisition and they used to paint their buildings blue to represent the color of the sky and connect the city to heaven. In the last 40 years, 
The rest of the city and the parts of the Medina that were predominantly white followed the blue trend for aesthetic or tourism purposes. Regardless of why this tradition started, we are sure that it will keep attracting visitors to this marvelous and unique town. After breakfast, at 11 a.m., we hired a private transfer from the Riyadh to bring us to Akchur. Nasser, our driver, was very friendly and knowledgeable about the history of the area around Shafshawin. Along the way, he explained to us many details about the life in the Rif Mountains. In 40 minutes, we arrived in the parking area of Akchur. Just few meters ahead, you will see the waterfall of the hydroelectrical dam from where there are two main trails that you can take. The one on the right will bring you next to the Farda River to a natural rock overpass called the God's Bridge. We chose the trail on the left, which follows the bank of the Kela'a River towards more waterfalls. Akchur, which is part of the Talasemtan National Park, is considered one of the most beautiful forest areas in Morocco. A green paradise immersed in nature where you can breathe fresh air and enjoy the tranquility of the Rif Mountains. In summer, these trails are very busy and there are many restaurants for the visitors that come here looking for the refreshing waters of the river. But in May, we only saw few locals. The trail was easy to follow, and there were often easy ditches to approach the waterfalls. In a little bit longer than one hour, we reached the waterfall known as the Petite Cascade. This is not the tallest, but for us, it is the most photogenic of the waterfalls in Akchur. Being surrounded by the lush vegetation and the cascades made us feel like we were in a tropical country. I cannot believe that this is Morocco! So today we made it only to the Petite Cascade. You can keep hiking up to the Great Cascade, but it's one hour more and we don't have time. For lunch, our driver had advised us to try the tagine of the cafe restaurant Ajulian. It is located at the very beginning of the trail to the God's Bridge. The owners were very friendly and their tagine has the best reviews in the area. You can also sit down next to the clear waters of the river with the mountains in the background. We're not going to visit the God's Bridge because we don't have time anymore and now it's getting very cloudy. So we're just going to have our lunch beside the very clean water of the river and then head back to Chef Shaman for sunset and dinner. Wow! <laughs> Freshly squeezed orange juice and tagine. It's a lot of meat. Wow! It's actually only one tagine. They are huge here. They just cook it there next to the river. The owner told us this is the best tagine that they have, so he advised us to get only one for both of us. Because it's huge. Hopefully, we can return to this area of Morocco in the future to keep exploring the Rith Mountains. You can hire Nassar for this day trip from Shafshawen or if you need any other ride nearby. As soon as we arrived in Shafshawen, we went immediately to the restaurant Casa Aladin for a light dinner. 
We were not very hungry, so we only ordered a soup and a coffee. Despite the overcast weather and our accumulated tiredness, we didn't want to miss the restaurant with the best views over the Uta El Hammam Square. Against all predictions, the twilight exploded again with red and pinks, gifting us another majestic show of vibrant colors to conclude our last day in a town that we will never forget. That ends our fifth episode of our Morocco travel series. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to our channel to support us and to follow our adventures. Don't miss our next episodes because we will show you more breathtaking and wonderful places in Morocco. Next stop, the Atlantic port city of Casablanca. Thank you so much for joining us. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, keep exploring, rain or shine.